Hey guys, what is up? Death Metal Bard here, and this is an interesting little thing that came up on Twitter. Uh, critical Role, uh, people who have made it big as uh, live streaming their games of Dungeons and Dragons. Famous uh, voice actors, Matt Mercer, one of them, uh, lots of people. Uh, this is their response to what has been going on with Wizards of the Coast, uh, the whole 1.1 OGL debacle that's been going on. It says here, Critical Role has always supported creators and game development in the tabletop space. We stand by our industry peers, as well as anyone who takes a risk creating a new system or developing an original one. The beauty, the beauty of gaming comes from the opportunity to share inclusive, diverse, and compelling stories from a wide spectrum of creators. That exactly why we launched our own game company, which is Darrington Press, uh, a few years ago, because we believe that broadening the field of creators boosts the entire industry. The success we have experienced is thanks to the passion and interest of the greater tabletop community, and we commit to fostering an environment that allows everyone the opportunity to easily share the stories they wish to tell. Now, some people uh, have kind of looked at that statement and said, you're, you're, that's really nothing about nothing, but... You have to think about it. You have to think of it in the in the position that Critical Role is in. Uh, they were sponsored heavily by D and D Beyond through most, like I think, a huge chunk of their stuff has D and D Beyond materials in it, and they you know a shield for them quite a bit. And this probably puts them in a quite a precarious situation, but I think that also puts them in a very advantageous uh, situation because for all intents and purposes maybe you know you could argue it but I think in my personal opinion a lot more people have gotten into 5e because of them because people wanted to see actors that they like playing that game you know that's why people made a big deal about Vin Diesel's you know Dungeons and Dragons World 2 right so they know for a fact that they brought in a ton of fans into this, uh, into tabletop, into, you know, specifically Dungeons and Dragons, and WotC probably knows that. So, personally, th this statement here is them basically saying, you know, we support uh, all the creators and we're creators ourselves, and they're leaving it at that. Because I think that they are in talks with WotC, or at the very least, their lawyers are in talk with WotC's lawyers, to see if they can get some kind of deal, some kind of something that will be good for both. Because uh, how it stands, uh, I don't think... Some people are saying uh, that, oh, Critical Role, you need to switch to Pathfinder 2! Second edition, you guys were originally Pathfinder First Edition before you guys switched to 5e, so and they're like, no, no, they're not going to do that. They've already played Fifth Edition so much, and uh, you know, Pathfinder Second Edition, while it's not as clunky or crunchy as First Edition, it's still got a lot of stuff to it. So I don't think they're going to change to it at least right away. If, if even at all. So what I think they're going to do is, like I said, I think they're trying to get like a special deal. So that way they can continue streaming uh, their stuff with uh, 5e's, you know, 5e stuff. But they're going to start taking out bit by bit all the old OGL materials. Because, and, and again, because I think... That if Wizards, you know, doubles down or triples down on the whole, no, we're going to own everything mentality. If that happens, you're going to probably get an announcement from Critical Role saying that the, uh, like, because of Wizards, blah, 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 they're going to say that the campaign that's currently going on, I think it's Bell's Hells, I think is the third season thing or whatever. Uh, they're going to put that on hiatus. And you're going to see them play other non-OGL uh, games as like one-shots or you know as mini-campaigns. 
essentially something that's going to keep giving them revenue until they finalize something. And here's the, the other thing. Mercer is a GM. He's probably been dabbling. I'm pretty sure all of them have been dabbling with and have talked about making their own system. Like, away from 5e. Maybe using, like, D20 mechanics, but doing their own complete uh, stuff with it. And I think that's something that could possibly happen in the future, at least for a Critical Role. Like I said, they have their own publishing company, and they've been working on publishing their own material. So I think that if, again, the Watsy deal, if that's what's going on, if that actually legitimately uh, falls through... You might see them decanonize uh, Wild Mount, which was, I believe, written in collaboration with Wizards. So that entire thing might get decanonized. Anything that had to do with uh, that in their world will probably be taken out and removed. And they'll start from scratch with completely new everything. Everything that they can get away with to get away from the OGL of Wizards, they'll probably do. I don't think that they'll go with Orc. Because I'm pretty sure they want to have complete and utter control of their IP and their materials. So I think Critical Role making their own game series sounds more likely. But e either way, this is all stuff that we can speculate on till the future. So if something changes, uh, obviously we'll, we'll figure it out one way or the other. Anyway, thanks for uh, watching. Rock on.